Hello everyone. So let us start the chapter number three from the class 10th social sciences syllabus. And this is going to be all about water resources. Now let's first quickly survey what are the key headings and what are the key themes in the chapter. So first thing, as you can see by this title, it talks about water scarcity and the need for water conservation and management. And the main thing you can, you know, look at just the first sentence, given the abundance and renewability of water, it is difficult to imagine that we may suffer from water scarcity. So that is this whole idea of what is the me meaning of water scarcity and what are the needs for water conservation and management? So this is what the section is going to talk about. Um, and then you can see some pictures which is talking about the themes of water scarcity. So this is a concept that is introduced in this chapter. And you can see some words here like post-independent India. So you can you can assume that, you know, there will be discussion about before independence, after independence. Um, OK, so, so that is one topic. Then the next topic in this chapter is all about multipurpose river projects and integrated water resources management. So it looks like in the first part, on um, the first section, it is all about the water resources or water scarcity. And second, we talk about the multipurpose river projects and the integrated uh, water resources management. Um, it talks to some points about the structures in ancient India. And then you can see some uh, dam. So there are going to be thing. you know, we'll be talking about dams here. What's its benefit and what happened before uh, the independence, what happened after the independence. So that is all about the water resources management. So we'll spend some time here. Then, I mean, when you talk about the dams and water resources, it's also a good idea to understand, you know, what are the major rivers and dams. So I think this this picture of the or, or this map here of India's major rivers and dam is very useful. I think it will be very helpful for you guys to have a close look at this and try to identify where the different rivers are. For example, you know, all this different uh, Indus, Jhelum, Chenab, Ravi, Satluj. Okay, there is location of some projects like Salal, there is Bees River, Pakranangal. So you can almost think about, you know, the uh, rivers in different parts of India, north, east, west, south, and see where the dams are, their location, and why do you think that may be. Okay, so it is very, very helpful for you to remember this picture, or at least get an idea of where things are, where the key rivers are. Okay, then the next topic in which is again kind of part of water management will be about rainwater harvesting. What does it mean? And, you know, which geographies does it help and so on? So that is it. You can see that there are pictures about recharging through a hand pump, you know, recharging through an abandoned dug well. So there might be some ways in which you can harvest rainwater. So there is this whole topic on rainwater harvesting. And you can see there are some examples that are given, like, you know, rooftop rainwater harvesting with an example in the, uh, you know, villages like of the Thar Desert. That's in Rajasthan. Then there is also this talk about a bamboo drip irrigation system. Okay, uh, yeah, and, and that is pretty much it. So I think the key themes in this chapter are, as, as it says, it's all about water resources. Kind of starts with identifying the water scarcity, followed by the need for, you know, why do we need to conserve and how do we manage the water? Then we talk about the various, uh, you know, projects to uh, uh, conserve water and manage it properly, as well as what can be done on the rainwater harvesting. So this is a very quick overview of the chapter. It's also helpful for you to look at some of the questions so that when, you know, we'll read the chapter, you will know what are the things to look out for. So you can say, they are talking about, you know, the question one is based on the information, classify each of the situations as suffering from water scarcity or not suffering from water scarcity. So this is an important thing. You, you know, you need to keep an eye out on how would you classify a situation that as water scarce and what is not water scarcity. Then, um, then there is this whole thing about and making an argument in favor of multi-purpose river projects. Why are they important? Why should we be doing that? So keep that in mind. Then, you know, they talk about some false statements and identifying the mistakes. They talk about urban centers um, have, uh, you know, have helped in proper utilization of water resources. 
Is this true or false? So this kind of gives you an idea that, okay, what happens in urban centers? How do they manage the utilization of water resources? So that's an angle to understand as we, you know, d discuss the chapter. Then you can look at the other statement, regulating and damming of rivers. So, okay, building dams does not affect rivers' natural flow and its sediment flow. Okay, fine. So, you know, we talked about building dams. Probably it will be talking about that. What, what, what do dams do to the river's natural flow? So this is something to keep in mind. Then it talks about in Gujarat, Sabarmati Basin farmers were not agitated when uh, higher priority was given to water supply in urban areas. Okay, so looks like uh, as you do some projects, then you know there might be some natural conflict of views between let's say farmers as well as uh, you know the water supply that gets into which who gets the water supply. Okay, and then there is one example of Rajasthan. The practice of roof rainwater harvesting has gained popularity despite high water availability due to Indira Gandhi Canal. Why is it so? Okay, and then you can see that there are some questions like, you know, how does water become a renewable resource? What is water scarcity and what are its main causes? So you can see the water scarcity themes keep coming up again and again. Uh, compare the advantages and disadvantages of multipurpose river projects. So this is kind of almost you can think as a debate of for and against, right? Why should, should we have them? Should we not have them? And building a very balanced view of why we need to do this. Then you can see that there are some more detailed, uh, you know, uh, questions. Uh, which says discuss how rainwater harvesting in semi-arid regions of Rajasthan is carried out. So as we read the chapter, uh, you know, you keep in mind that we, we need to see how this is happening in Rajasthan. Similarly, describe how modern adaptations of traditional rainwater harvesting are being carried out to conserve and store water. So again, uh, you know, this kind of assumes modern adaptations means there there has been, you know, since ancient times, there have been multiple ways of harvesting rainwater. So what is happening in the modern times? How are these methods being carried out? Okay, so yeah, I think that is a very quick survey of this chapter on water resources. And uh, yeah, I'll start the next video. We can start going into this chapter.